Today we are going to study a very important subject and that is our relationship to the world and worldly enterprises. As a basis for our meditation, let us open our Bibles and read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and we read verses 14 onwards. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. In this statement of the Apostle Paul, he shows clearly the duty of being separated from the world. There is no concord between Christ and Satan. There is no unity between light and darkness. No communion between truth and falsehood. The Bible says that there is no agreement between the temple of God and the idols and therefore because there must be a clear distinction the apostle says therefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord and if we separate ourselves from the world and worldly enterprises, the Lord promises to receive us as his sons and daughters. He said, ye shall be my sons and daughters, and I will be a father unto you. This same truth was stated also by Jesus Christ when he offered his priestly prayer to the Father as it is recorded in John chapter 17 we read verses 14 to 16 John 17 14 to 16 I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray that thou shouldest, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Here Jesus shows clearly that we are in the world but we should not be of the world. And if we come out of the world the world will hate us as it hated Jesus. And Jesus said in his prayer that he does not ask the Father to take us out of the world, not yet, 
but that we should be kept from evil in this world. In 1 John, in 1 John chapter 2, we read here from verse 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. We have to be separated from the world. And according to what John says here, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all this is not of God, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world will pass away. Therefore, he says, if we love these things and do them, the love of the Father is not in us. But besides the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, lust of the flesh, besides all these, there are some other aspects that the Bible and the spirit of prophecy tells us clearly that we should keep away from certain things. And we will consider three important things that are in the world and we are called to separate ourselves from these things. The first that we shall consider is our separation from politics. A statement that we read in Fundamentals of Christian Education, pages 483 and 484, reads, God calls his people, saying, Come out from among them, and be ye separate. He asks that the love which he has shown for them may be reciprocated and revealed by willing obedience to his commandments. His children are to separate themselves from politics, from any alliance with unbelievers. They are not to link their interests with the interests of the world. Give proof of your allegiance to me, he says by standing as my chosen heritage, as a people zealous of good works. Do not take part in political strife. Separate from the world and refrain from bringing into the church or school ideas that will lead to contention or disorder. Dissension is the moral poison taken into the system by human beings who are selfish. God wants his servants to have clear perceptions, true and noble dignity, that their influence may demonstrate the power of truth. The Christian life is not to be a haphazard emotional life. The Christian influence exerted for the accomplishment of the work God has appointed is a precious agency and it must not be united with politics or bound up in a confederacy with unbelievers. God is to be the center of attraction. Every mind is worked by the Holy Spirit will be satisfied with him. 
The call of God is that we should come out from the world and from taking part in political strife or political campaigns and in Gospel Workers page 395 we read this there is a large vineyard to be cultivated but while Christians are to work among unbelievers they are not to appear like worldlings they are not to spend their time talking politics or acting politics for by so doing they give the enemy opportunity to come in and cause variance and discord those in the ministry who desire to stand as politicians should have their credentials taken from them for this work God has not given to high or low among his people this is a must those that engage in political discussion and involve themselves as politicians in such movements the spirit of prophecy says clearly that their credentials should be taken God did not give that responsibility to any of his servants and the manuscript releases page 41 of volume 3 manuscript releases volume 3 page 41 I read God has warned his people not to become absorbed in politics we cannot bear the sign of God as his commandment keeping people if we mingle with the strife of the world we are not to give our minds to political issues God's people are walking contrary to his will when they mix up with politics and those who commence this work in the southern states reveal that they are not taught and led by God but by that spirit which creates contention and strife and every evil work we are subjects of the Lord's kingdom and we are to work to establish that kingdom in righteousness the uh, desire of God is that we should leave aside everything connected with politics and this is again affirmed in gospel workers pages 391 and 392 the Lord would have his people bury political questions on these themes silence is eloquence Christ calls upon his followers to continue in the unity on the pure gospel principles which are plainly revealed in the Word of God we cannot with safety vote for political parties for we do not know whom we are voting for we cannot with safety take part in any political scheme we cannot labor to please men who will use their influence to repress religious liberty and to set in operation oppressive measures to lead or compel their fellow men to keep Sunday as the Sabbath the first day of the week is not a day to be reverenced it is a spurious Sabbath and the members of the Lord's family cannot participate with the men who exalt this day and violate the law of God by trampling upon his Sabbath the people of God are not to vote to place such men in office for when they do this they are partakers with them of the sins which they commit while in office what are we to do then 
let political questions alone. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? What can there be in common between these parties? There can be no fellowship, no communion. It is clearly stated in this paragraph of the Spirit of Prophecy that God's people should bury the political issues. It is stated clearly also here that we should let political question alone. And the Spirit of Prophecy reminds us the Bible verses that we have read in the beginning in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And those who have tendency to discuss politics even in institutions of the church, they should be dealt with in Gospel Workers, page 393, we read, Those teachers in the church or in the school who distinguish themselves by their zeal in politics should be relieved of their work and responsibilities without delay, for the Lord will not cooperate with them. The tithe should not be used to pay any one for speechifying on political questions. Every teacher, minister, or leader in our ranks who is stirred with the desire to ventilate his opinions on political questions should be converted by a belief in the truth or give up his work. His influence must tell as a laborer together with God in winning souls to Christ, or his credentials must be taken from him. If he does not change, he will do harm and only harm. On page 394, that the question may be asked, are we to have no union whatever with the world? The word of the Lord is to be our guide. Any connection with infidels and unbelievers that would identify us with them is forbidden by the word. We are to come out from among them and be separate. In no case are we to link ourselves with them in their plans of work but we are not to live reclusive lives. We are to do worldlings all the good we possibly can. In this paragraph is speaking especially of ministers and teachers, those that have responsibilities in the church. And if do not give up their tendency of discussing or ventilating political issues, the spirit of prophecy advise that their credentials should be cancelled. But what about members of the church, others who are not leaders? On page 395 in Gospel Workers, we read the following. Gospel Workers 395. God's children are to separate themselves from politics, from any alliance with unbelievers. They are not to link their interests with the interests of the world. Give proof of your allegiance to me, he says, by standing as my 
chosen heritage, as a people zealous of good works, do not take part in political strife, separate from the world, and refrain from bringing into the church or school ideas that will lead to contention and disorder. Dissension is the moral poison taken into the system by the human beings who are selfish. God wants his servants to have clear perceptions, true and noble dignity, that their influence may demonstrate the power of truth. In this paragraph, speaking not only about the leaders, but also about the members of the church. God, children, they should separate themselves from politics. And in Testimonies for the Church, volume 9, page 218, again and again, Christ had been asked to decide legal and political questions, but he refused to interfere in temporal matters. He stood in our world as the head of the great spiritual kingdom that he had come to our world to establish, the kingdom of righteousness. His teaching made plain the ennobling, sanctifying principles that govern his kingdom. He showed that justice and mercy and love are the controlling powers in Jehovah's kingdom. Jesus Christ was requested to enter in political questions. But Jesus refused to interfere in temporal matters. In Desire of Ages, on page 509, we read a very interesting statement. Desire of Ages 509. The government under which Jesus lived was corrupted, corrupt and oppressive. On every hand were crying abuses, extortion, intolerance, and grinding cruelty. The Savior attempted no civil reforms. He attacked no national abuse nor condemn the national enemies. He did not interfere with the authority or administration of those in power. He, who was our example, kept aloof from earthly governments, not because he was indifferent to the woes of men, but because the remedy did not lie in merely human and external measures. To be efficient, the cure must reach men individually and must regenerate the heart. Jesus did not intend to make any changes in civil governments. Although he saw that the government was corrupt, Jesus kept aloof from worldly governments. And he is our example. But the question may be asked, but were not some of God's servants in the past in high positions in the government? Oh yes, it's true. We have, for example, the case of Joseph in Egypt. He became the governor of Egypt. But how did he reach that position? By political maneuvering or campaign? No. Joseph entered there because of his faithfulness to God. And then he earned the confidence of the king. And because God was with him, he 
was trusted with high responsibilities in the government. We have also the case of Daniel. He was also a prime minister in Babylon. But not only in Babylon. When Medo Persia conquered Babylon, Daniel continued in that same position. And he served as prime minister under the Medes and the Persians. But how did he get in the government? Without any political involvement. He reached that position again because of his faithfulness to God. He determined to be faithful and God blessed him. And he had an excellent characteristic. God gave him wisdom and he stands not only as a man of integrity, but also as one chosen of God, as a prophet that foretold the future of the world. Nothing wrong for us to cooperate with the government if we are called to that position because of our faithfulness. We should have ability and training that we should even be able to sit in councils, in legislative councils to help to make good laws. We have to have that ability but we should not involve ourselves in politics. And if because of our faithfulness we are taken to such a position, then there we should represent our faith and we should represent the character of God and His law. In Testimonies to Ministers, page 131, we read, Christianity, how many there are who do not know what it is. It is not something put on the outside. It is a life inwrought with the life of Jesus. It means that we are wearing the robe of Christ's righteousness. In regard to the world, Christians will say, we will not dabble in politics. They will say decidedly, we are pilgrims and strangers. Our citizenship is above. They will not be seen choosing company for amusement. They will say, we have ceased to be infatuated by childish things. We are strangers and pilgrims looking for a city which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. And on page 337 of the same book, Testaments to Ministers, we read, When the speaker shall, in a haphazard way, strike in anywhere as the fancy takes him when he talks politics to the people, he is mingling the common fire with the sacred. He dishonors God. He has not real evidence from God that he is speaking the truth. He does his hearers a grievous wrong. He may plant seeds which may strike the fibrous roots deep and they spring up and bear poisonous fruit. How dare men do this? How dare they advance ideas when they do not know certainly whence they came or that they are the truth? And in Manuscript Releases, Volume 9, page 130, 
we are to work distinctly in God's lines, refusing to follow worldly practices. And further down, those who have distinguished themselves in politics, who have prepared their political differences, were looked upon not only by human spectators, but by the Lord Jesus, who gave life to save a perishing world. The heavenly universe watched their course with disapproval, and Satan and his synagogue watched also. They were a spectacle to the world, to angels, and to men. And in volume 15, page 39, manuscript releases, volume 15, page 39, the mingling or churchcraft and statecraft is represented by the iron and the clay. This union is weakening all the power of the churches. This investing the church with the power of the state will bring evil results. Men have almost passed the point of God's forbearance. They have invested their strength in politics and have united with the papacy, but the time will come when God will punish those who have made void his law, and their evil work will recoil upon themselves. The church ought to be completely separated from the world and from the plans the world has has because according to prophecies soon the time will come when the laws of men will be exalted above the law of God therefore according to what we have read in the spirit of prophecy and also in the Bible we should separate ourselves from taking part in politics. What about taking part in trade unions or being members of trade unions? In Selected Messages, Book 2, page 142, we read, the work of the people of God is to prepare for the events of the future, which will soon come upon them with blinding force. In the world, gigantic monopolies will be formed. Men will bind themselves together in unions that will wrap them in the folds of the enemy. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of business. Trade unions will be formed, and those who refuse to join these unions will be marked men. Trade unions are formed today on different lines, both commercial and industrial, and any other professional career. And the purpose of the trade unions is to look for the interests of the work and of the workers. But trade unions is an enterprise that is not approved of God. In the book, Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 1, page 28, I read this. Cast out of heaven, Satan set up his kingdom in this world, and ever since he has been untiringly striving to seduce human beings from their allegiance to God. He uses the same power that he used in heaven the influence of mind on mind. 
Men become tempters of their fellow men. The strong corrupting sentiments of Satan are cherished and they exert a masterly compelling power. Under the influence of these sentiments, men bind up with one another in confederacies, in trade unions, and in secret societies. There are at work in this world agencies that God will not much longer tolerate. Did you notice that here it says that confederacies will be formed. And the Bible tells us in the book of prophet Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 12. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Men will confederate in trade unions and secret societies. And as we have read in the book Mind, Character and Personality, these are all under the influence of Satan. The Apostle James tells us in chapter 5, what is the attitude of laborers when they are ill-treated. James chapter 5, we read from verse 4. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the ju just, and he does not resist you. When the wages of laborers are diminished for the purpose that others may be enriched. What is the attitude of these laborers? The Bible says that he, the laborer, did not resist you. This is what should be our attitude. We leave it in God's hand and God will take care of his children. And in Manuscript Releases, Volume 4, page 23, we read, Satanic agencies are becoming more determined in their rebellion against God. The trade unions will be the cause of the most terrible violence that has ever been seen among human beings. Did you notice what the Spirit of Prophecy says? Trade unions will be the most terrible means to bring violence in this world. And Manuscript Releases, Volume 4, page 88. Satan will do that which will close the southern field against the truth, if the Lord does not interpose. And the trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this earth a time of trouble such as has not been seen since the world began. And in the book Maranatha, page 141, we are now to use all our entrusted capabilities in giving the last warning message to the world. In this work, we are to preserve our individuality. We are not to unite with secret societies or with trade unions. 
we are to stand free in God, looking constantly to Christ. According to these statements from Spirit of Prophecy, we have to keep away from trade unions because trade unions will be the means by which Satan will bring about a time of trouble such as never was. What about secret societies that we have read about? In the book Evangelism, page 618, we read, There are those who question whether it is right for Christians to belong to the Freemasons and other secret societies. Let all such consider the scriptures just quoted. If we are Christians at all, we must be Christians everywhere and must consider and heed the counsel given to make us Christians according to the standard of God's Word. And Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 28. Satan coming as Christ and working with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are binding themselves together in secret societies. Those who are yielding to the passion for confederation are working out the plans of the enemy. The cause will be followed by the effect. In Selected Messages, Book 2, 131, in the revelation of his righteous judgment, God will break up all these associations. And when the judgment shall sit, and the books be opened, there will be revealed the unchristlikeness of the whole confederacy. Those who choose to unite with these secret societies are paying homage to idols as senseless and as powerless to bless and save the soul as are the gods of the Hindus. Bible Commentary Volume 7, 9, 8, 5. It is quoted, Revelation 18, 1 to 8. And the comment about that is, This terrible picture drawn by John to show how completely the powers of the earth will give themselves over to evil should show those who have received the truth how dangerous it is to link up with secret societies or to join themselves in any way with those who do not keep God's commandments. Selected Message Book 2, 140. Here is a strong warning. Those who stand under the blood-stained banner of Prince Emmanuel cannot be united with the Freemasons or with any secret organization. The seal of the living God will not be placed upon anyone who maintains such a connection after the light of truth has shone upon his pathway. Christ is not divided and Christians cannot serve God and mammon. The Lord says, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The seal of the living God will not be placed upon the foreheads of those who join themselves to secret societies. And another statement from Reviant Herald, January 10, 1893. Reviant Herald, January 10, 1893. But the servants of Christ 
cannot bind themselves up with the world. They cannot belong to secret societies without binding themselves in with the tares. He who has placed himself under the banner of Christ has pledged himself to follow no pursuit, to engage in no enterprise that shall interfere with his service to the Lord of heaven. Christ is to be his all and in all. Manuscript Releases, Volume 8, page 322. As we near the close of time, there will be greater and still greater external parade of heathen power. Heathen deities will manifest their signal power and will exhibit themselves before the cities of the world. And this delineation has already begun to be fulfilled. By a variety of images, the Lord Jesus represented to John the wicked character and seductive influence of those who have been distinguished for their persecution of God's people. All need wisdom carefully to search out the mystery of iniquity that figures so largely in the winding up of this earth's history. God's presentation of the detestable works of the inhabitants of the ruling powers of the world who bind themselves into secret societies and confederacies not honoring the law of God should enable the people who have the light of truth to keep clear of all these evils. More and more will all false religionists of the world manifest their evil doings. For there are but two parties, those who keep the commandments of God and those who war against God's holy law. Manuscript Releases, Volume 20, page 285. One great hindrance to your clear spiritual eyesight is your connection with secret societies. If Christ were abiding in your heart by faith, you would understand His will in this matter and would not need that anyone should enlighten you. You are losing faith and confidence in and love for the Lord and the truth. The spirit of prophecy here is speaking about some who were involved in secret societies. And on page 287, speaking about the same person, said the Lord of heaven witnessed every form of your ceremonies. His ear heard every pledge, every oath that bound you in unholy bonds to these secret societies. Every tie which you strengthen by continuing with them is binding your soul, body and spirit in stronger unholy bonds. The injunction of the Word of God is come out from among them, touch not the unholy things, and I will receive you. I will be a father unto you, the Lord says, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. All those who desire to be entirely on the side of the Lord, they should keep away from these societies. Keep away from taking part in politics. Keep away from trade unions and from secret societies. And if we do that, we come out of the world, then the Lord promises, I will receive you to myself. May God help us that we may understand our responsibility 
in these last days and be in the world but not of the world. This is my desire and my prayer. Amen. Thank you.